Hey guys, Alex from Fast Fitness Tips here. Contrary to some rumors, I'm not against marginal gains. I use marginal gains all the time, whether that be tires, whether it be drivetrain friction, whether it be aerodynamics, whether it be bike design, whether it be comfort, all of those things can have marginal gains. But there's a point where the marginal gains basically become so expensive, so ludicrously expensive. The only person or entity that should really invest in that would be a pro team with infinite resources like Team Ineos, Team Sky funded, some rumors say, 40 or 50 million dollars a year. Then yes, they can afford an item which costs you, hmm, what? Several hundred, maybe a thousand, maybe two thousand pounds, euro or dollar, Per what? That is just a crazy, crazy price, guys. And I'm talking about you, Ceramic Speed. I'm talking about the ceramic bearings from Ceramic Speed that we've had in to test against what? Compared to a decent quality steel set from Air Velo, very humble price, £20 per set, £200 per set. What kind of person or team is going to buy these? Okay, but I don't want to just stand here making a rant. I want to provide you with the evidence so you can decide for yourself. Besides, there's some things in the bottom bracket everyone can do to improve the quality of their bottom bracket, basically reducing the friction. So here goes guys, bottom bracket friction and are ceramic bearings worth it in 10 or 15 minutes? Take it away. Morning guys, Alex from Fast Fitness Tips here. We've genuinely got a big one, a popular request is bottom bracket friction. Bottom bracket friction, that's a tongue twister. We're looking at bottom bracket friction today and answering the question, is it worth upgrading your bottom bracket to ceramic bearings? It's a hot topic. People get very heated about it. And I'm not surprised because the cost of some of these ceramics, yes, I'm looking at you ceramic speed, is over $200 pounds, euros, in some cases, three, three fifty, hundred pounds, euros, dollars, whatever your currency, it's an astonishing amount of money for such a simple item. Well, I say simple because you can go to another manufacturer, whether that's Hawk Racing, Enduro, Hope, SRAM themselves, and you can pick up a perfectly good bearing set in steel let's say medium quality, for around 10 to 20 euros per item. If you're going high end, you can get a ceramic set for 30, 40 or 50 quite comfortably. So why then are certain manufacturers charging two, three, four hundred? Well, there's a bit of a head scratcher for sure. But I guess it rests upon the question, are there gains to be had from those ceramic bearings or from that manufacturer. And although are those gains appreciable? Will you feel them on the bike? Will you benefit from them? If you're keen time trialist or triathlon rider, will they benefit your riding? Will you win a race? We all know about marginal gains. You've got to attend to everything that you can. I accept that. But does that mean these are logical investments? So let's start with the basics, guys. What is the general friction in your bike bottom bracket area? It's actually an easy one to look at. You can just take your chain off the bike, let the crank spin basically in free air. Feel if there's any resistance in there. In fact, you can do a little coin test. The coin test is as follows. Take the chain off, make sure it's not dragging anywhere, do it carefully and then put the cranks horizontal. Now put a coin on the pedal. I recommend you use a euro or a pound if you're in the UK. That's around eight grams or a quarter in the USA. That's around five grams. Now if you have to use more than two pounds or two euros or three quarters to get those pedals to turn when you put them on the cranks, that's a problem. That's a problem, guys. There's too much friction in that area. If you want a simpler way, just put your finger on the crank and feel how hard it is to turn. Can you turn the crank 
without actually grabbing hold of the pedal and the crank itself, just with the force of your finger on the outside of the crank. Can you turn the pedal in those circumstances? If you can't, you've got a problem. Now all that said, most of you probably got a bike, your good bike, your best bike, which passes those tests. And that means that the friction in that area is generally around one watt or less. Yeah, it's a very small amount of friction coming from the bottom brackets. It's actually kind of a miracle of engineering. When you think it's the heart of the bike, when you think of how few people attend to that area, how few people clean it. But let's say you do take your bike to the bike store and you ask them, upgrade my bearings, you know, put something, put a hot pair of bearings on there like Enduro XD15, a really nice ceramic set from Enduro. What's going to happen? Well, you're going to get a gain. 95% chance, probably 99% chance, you're going to get a gain. But if you think the gain is coming from the ceramic balls themselves, you're almost certainly wrong. Because the gain that you get when you take your bike to the store and they clean out the bottom bracket area, they dry out all the moisture that's accumulated and they make that contamination back to how it was when you bought the bike new. What you're going to find is you're going to gain 5, even 10 watts of friction probably due to dirt and contamination. If you've had your bike more than a year and you're a regular rider and you haven't stripped your bottom bracket down, do it and you're probably in for a surprise because that is one of the dirtiest areas on the bike without exception. So for sure you're going to get a gain when you take your bike to the store and they put something new on there but 90% of that gain or more is going to come from cleaning that area. Okay, I can tell you want to talk products here and that's fair enough and you probably want to talk about which bearing is best, right? So yes, let's all assume for a second that you've got a clean bottom bracket area with a pretty good, you know, stock set that came with the bike, let's say Tram Force or even Dura Ace. Can you beat that? Well, of course you can beat it by upgrading the bearings and yes, Friction Facts did test this in one of their early tests in 2013. Now, after they were acquired by Ceramic Speed, I would say they've definitely lost their independence. But at the time they carried out this test, hmm, I have no reason to say they weren't independent. And they did a pretty good test here in terms of covering the whole market. And you can see that the friction due to the bearings in the bottom bracket area goes from about 0.3 watts up to about 2 watts for the very worst. It's actually quite a compressed range if you think about it. Two watts in total is not a great deal from the best to the worst. And you can see that ceramic speed themselves didn't come out number one. It wasn't as simple as that all the ceramics were clustered at one end and all the steel were clustered at the other. In other words, the general quality of the manufacturer is probably paramount. Now, if you average this chart out, it turns out that the average saving of ceramic over steel is only 0.3 of a watt, which converts to something like a fairly minuscule 10 seconds over a full distance 180k iron man. Not much when you consider that the typical differential in price is around about 100 pounds or euros or dollars. However, if you filter this by the best quality, best quality ceramic versus best quality steel, the difference is like Occam's razor, like trying to put a fine piece of tracing paper between those two is actually about, well, it's less than, definitely less than 0.1 watt. It's around 0.03 of a watt. We're talking about a difference as 100, 200 or 300 dollars for that tiny, tiny difference in watts, 0 0.03. One of probably the least logical upgrades you can make on a bike. And it's not like Ceramic Speed, which are the most expensive, were definitely the best. No, whilst they were independent, Friction Facts found that they were languishing around about, let's count it, one, two, three, four, five, six, six place approximately. So it's not like the ludicrously expensive ones were disproportionately 
always in number one place. That wasn't the case. Now, if you can't be bothered with all this data, you can't be bothered with my coin test, then you can download our calculator it's shown on screen here. We call it the Fast Fitness Tips Dynamic Drivetrain Calculator. And what this enables you to do is put in your drivetrain specs, for example, your cassette size, your chain ring size, the gearing ratios. It will work out for you with pretty good accuracy of what your losses are due to your drivetrain. It will also tell you, you know, you got like 13% of losses due to rear derailleur and chain set, 80%, which is quite typical due to the chain, and about 4 to 5% of all drivetrain losses are coming from the bearings. So you can see that here, out of 12 watts losses, only 0.57 are coming from bearing losses per se. Okay, that's an interesting observation. So if I'm saying that, you know, the bearing losses are quite small, can we hone that down further and ask the question, where in the bearings do these losses accrue? Basically, what's going on to cause friction? Well, it's been tested by a few labs. One is by Schaeffler. Hambini quotes this on his website. And basically, the bottom line is only... 10% or so is due to rolling friction within the bearing. For example, the cage slipping or the bearing slipping or the balls actually deforming to a microscopic degree or the race on the outside deforming to a microscopic degree. You know, that's only about 10%. Actually, the majority probably comes from the seal on the outside, unless there's something clever going on with a non-contact seal and the grease that's put in. So you can attend to that. We'll come back to that in a second. So the seals and the grease probably account for the majority of the losses in a bearing, which is why they remove those when you see those images of the bearings spinning apparently forever. Okay, we talked about friction now, but there's another side to this, which is longevity. If you've got a product which doesn't last very long, then it doesn't really matter what's going to happen with your initial setup because it's going to deteriorate pretty quickly, right? Especially in what we've established is a pretty dirty area. So we've got different types of bearings. We've got, we've got full ceramic, we've got hybrid, which can be a mixture of, for example, ceramic balls and steel outer, and we've got steel on steel. Well, I did think, and Hambini thought this as well, I heard his video on this, that the wear of hybrid bearings was worse than all other combinations. But this has now been tested by various sources, including GMN in Germany and also HSC Ceramics looked at this with a lab test. And they found that steel on steel was actually worse. Hybrid was intermediate and full ceramic was probably best. Now, we don't know exactly how that translates into the life of a bottom bracket bicycle bearing. But what we can estimate is that if you're running them dirty, you're going to lose 5 to 10 watts in that contamination effect that we were talking about before. But all that grit and grime, which gets like eroded into a paste and then gradually wears down, you know, anything that can be worn down, that's not super hard, that's going to uh, cost you an irreversible watt every 10, 20 or 30K as that erosion occurs, if you see what I mean. On the other side of the coin, if you keep things really clean, then you probably don't have to replace your bottom bracket bearings for years. I mean, for 20, 30, 40, 50,000 kilometers or, you know, what most cyclists are going to do may, may be in five years. But really, are you going to be able to keep that area scrupulously clean for all that time is very, very unlikely. Most people treat their bottom bracket as a kind of fit and forget area. I would say less than one in a thousand people are going to correctly attend to their bottom bracket area, clean their bottom bracket area, strip it down, get the moisture out, remove the contaminants, re-grease it. It's going to be quite a rare event <laughs> for most cyclists. Okay, now I've mentioned grease there. Let's get into that. There is a saving to be made from using the right product in your bottom bracket area. You could, in theory, use oil, by the way. The problem with oil, of course, is it generally oozes out quite quickly 
and he also picks up quite a lot of contamination. Friction Facts have tested pure oil and one to five drops of oil is a particularly smooth product to add in your bearings. But as I say, is one that doesn't tend to stay there very long. So yes, you might save 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a watt on, on race day by removing the grease and using oil. But you'll pick up so many contaminants unless you're keeping things clean every time that you're going to lose one to three watts by the end of the month. For 99% of people, a better bet would be a product like Finish Line Extreme, which tests almost as good. It stays in that area and it, you know, it's pretty cheap, to be honest. OK, guys, let's summarize what I'm saying. And it's really pretty simple. If you keep your bottom bracket area clean and free of contamination, that's going to save you the majority of the savings around about 10 watt savings or 90% of the total savings. And it's going to cost you virtually nothing over the year, just elbow grease, if you see what I mean. But let's call it $2 for 10 watts. Yes, you can upgrade your bearings and it's maybe worth doing so for those keen racers, you know, those people who are really riding against the clock. We're talking about 10% of the potential savings or one watt in total. And it's going to cost you around about 30 or $40, let's say. Yes, the next thing you can do is you can buy a good quality grease to go in there, better than stock, nothing too sticky. And that's going to save you another half a watt, let's say. And it's going to cost you around about $10 to $20 to do that. And that will probably last you several years right there. And the last thing you can do, the smallest thing, the least logical, is to specifically upgrade to ceramic. The benefits that we saw are somewhere between 0 0.03 and 0 0.1 of a watt. And it's going to cost you roughly three, $400 to do that. So if you were to stack up marginal gains on a kind of chart on one side, on one side, you'd have a skin suit, which cost around 200 pounds or dollars and saved you about 20 watts. That would be 10 pounds or dollars per watt. In the middle, you might have a helmet, which costs one to $200 and saved you five watts what, 20 pound a watt? And at the other end, we've got the ceramic upgrade from Quality Steel, which is going to save at most 0.1 of a watt and cost you around two or $300. Let's call it $200. So that means it's $2,000 per watt. I can't even believe I'm saying that, guys. And yet their business model seems to work. But for now, that's my take on bottom bracket bearings. Yes, there are various gains to be made, but it turns out most of the gains are actually really obvious and don't require you to spend much money at all. OK, guys, that was our video on ceramic speed bearings. Are they worth it? I would say for 99 percent of people, they are not worth it. Look at other marginal gains. But if you insist, just be aware of the amount that you're paying and the amount that you're getting. In other words, be aware of the cost be aware of the saving and therefore if you know those sides of the equation you can decide whether the value is right for you hey maybe it is maybe you've got the resources for these but for 99 percent of people even those quite well endowed yes these are not worth it for most people take care guys until next time don't forget to give me your comments below what is your view on ceramic bearings are they worth it did you have a gain? I mean, let's face it, hundreds, if not thousands of cyclists do use ceramic bearings. So some ceramic bearings are actually decent value. What's your opinion? Tell me in the comments below, guys. Until next time, Coach Alex from Fast Fitness Tips signing out. Hey guys, while the titles are rolling, I just want to remind you of some of our more popular recent links, including our training periodization planner, FFT.tips TPP. That links you with what training you should do at what time of year, which will sync with our training plans. We've got more than 20 uploaded to training peaks here. Also, we've got our time in zone, FFT.tips TIZ. And if you want to join with us on Strava or race with us, you can actually do it by joining Zwift Power and Zwift. It would be great if you could join. We've got 55 races of all abilities that have joined so far. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. See you out there. See you in the next video.